morning. Give me a thumbs up when your cameramen are ready. You're good? Got it. Good morning. My deepest condolences for the 15 people injured last night in the 1000 block of West 79th Street and my condolences for the three-year-old child who was shot just five minutes, five miles east of 2400 in the 2400 block of East 74th Street. I'm going to quickly turn it over to Chief of the Detectives Brendan Dinahan uh, for more details on both of these shootings, and then I'll come back with further comments, and then the mayor will come up and speak, uh, and then we'll take questions. Brendan. Good morning. I'm going to briefly uh, go over the facts of uh, the case. I think a lot of people have some of the detail. Uh, First Deputy uh, Carter was out on the scene last night and gave the basic information. Uh, we know that there was a funeral taking place, and uh, there were several individuals hanging outside of that location <clears throat> when a vehicle, a Malibu, came pulling around the block. And then you can see individuals from the Malibu discharge firearms into that crowd. What we know now, based upon the evidence, is members from that crowd also are armed with firearms and are shooting back at the Malibu. That car crashes, the original car with the offenders in it crashes. Those offenders flee on foot, making good their escape at this time, at which point all the officers and detectives arrive on the scene. We know now that that car used in the incident was stolen, so detectives are going to be working on that aspect of the case to see how and when it was stolen. Uh, as the superintendent mentioned, we have uh, 15 people shot, and one of whom is still in extremely uh, critical condition. We have another individual in critical condition. The rest of the individuals, the doctors believe, are going to make a recovery. Uh, we have almost 60 shell casings out on the scene, and at this point, detectives um, are working with the individuals who are shot, interviewing them. We are also looking to seek additional witnesses to help out with this case. We believe that there's individuals out in the community and out in the crowd who know the shooters, they know who did this incident. We are we're imploring, we're really seeking, please, to help the detectives with this investigation. This, this can't happen. You can't drive down the street and indiscriminately shoot into a crowd of people and then flee the scene and make good your escape. We know that the information is out there. The detectives want to arrest these individuals and bring them to justice. So we're seeking the community's um, cooperation to assist us in this investigation and remove these offenders from the street. Unfortunately, as the superintendent mentioned, not long after this, uh, another three-year-old child was shot in the head, and thankfully, that child is in stable condition and talking. But in that incident, mother and father are out. Uh, <clears throat> it was late at night, and the child's in the seat, and they are at a gas station where an altercation occurs, and at which point, when the father's driving away, shots are fired into the vehicle, striking the child. At this point, uh, the detectives uh, have a long way to go in their investigation, and we're trying to get some more information on the mother and father. Uh, uh, at this time, uh, we don't have all the information that we need, we're trying to gain more cooperation from them, what they were doing in that area, why they were out at that time, and what exactly occurred. So that investigation is, on, is ongoing as well. So once again, um, I know that the community doesn't want this, uh, want this violence in the communities, and we're asking for the people to provide us with the information, allow us to build a case uh, to move forward. So at that, I'm going to turn it back over to the superintendent. So let me start by just talking about what the violence really is uh, involving. There are over 117,000 gang members in the city of Chicago, 117,000 gang members in the city of Chicago. That's not bad enough. They're broken down into 55 major gangs, broken down into 20, I'm sorry, 747 factions 
of those 55 major games. And those 747 factions are broken down into 2,500 subsets of those factions. I'm going to say that again real slow. 117,000 gang members in City Chicago, 55 major gangs account for that 117,000, 747 factions, and 2,500 subsets of those factions. And any day of the week, any hour of the day, several hundred gang conflicts related to that 117,000 gang members. The details of the drive-by shooting that took place during the funeral at the Auburn Gresham neighborhood are already widely known, as Chief of Detectives Brendan Deanhan just mentioned. The victims are ranged from good to serious condition, condition. These victims were all wounded when shots were fired as family members and friends gathered to grieve the loss of a loved one who was killed in a drive-by shooting. As was mentioned, six hours later, a three-year-old was traveling with her parents when their vehicle was fired upon by two men standing on the corner. The child's in good condition. She was shot in the head. Neither parent was injured. And I can't stress this enough, my deepest condolences go out to all of these victims of the shooting. The cycle of violence in Chicago Someone gets shot, which prompts someone else to pick up a gun. This same cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. This cycle is fueled by street gangs, guns, and drugs. In the case of the funeral shooting, rival factions repeated this cycle. Too many people in Chicago have been touched by gun violence. And the response too often is picking up a gun to seek vengeance. There is no comfort in revenge. None. Put your guns down. We can't keep meeting out violence with violence. An eye for an eye makes us both blind. It's destroying our families and perpetuates this endless cycle of gunshot victims night after night. A bullet for a bullet is killing these families, these neighborhoods. These bullets are shot in anger, fear, desperation. These bullets sent more than a dozen people to the hospital last night and a three-year-old to the hospital just hours later. The impact of these bullets goes beyond pain and grief. These bullets are destroying our sense of safety in our neighborhoods. These, these bullets also leave the survivors with a feeling of hopelessness. Those who experience a shooting wonder if they might be the next person shot. Imagine living with that feeling day after day. This cycle of violence in Chicago needs to end. It ends when someone, has, when someone who has been hurt doesn't reach for a gun. It ends when instead someone calls our detectives, gives them a tip that might break a case open and we can hold people accountable in the criminal justice system. I ask everyone that knows anything about these shootings and others to bring real justice, not revenge, by calling Area 2 detectives at 312-747-8271. I'll repeat, 312-747-8271. Seven one. You can also contact Chicago's anonymous tip line, cpdtip.com. The anonymous tip line is cpd, cpdtip.com.
dot com. CPD has recovered over 5,000 guns so far this year and made over 3,500 gun arrests. I am directing CPD officers to redouble our efforts to recover even more guns, to make even more arrests in an effort to bring safety. And we want to do this in a larger deployment strategy, more of a centralized deployment with a large group of dedicated to our hotspots of violence and crime to include engaging the community with positive interactions with our young people and their families. Put down the guns. Put them down. End the cycle. End it today. We can do this. But it can only happen one neighborhood at a time. With that, I'll turn it over to the mayor. Mayor. This is a morning, morning. Another day where we start with despair. Another day that we start with reporting on violence in a neighborhood that has struck and felled too many people. I think Superintendent Brown and Chief Dinahan have laid out the basic facts. I want to extend my thanks to our many first responders and community outreach members who were on the scene last night within moments of the horrific incident and provided aid and comfort to those who were injured. I also want to <clears throat> extend my condolences to each and every one of the people that was injured in the funeral home incident, but also the three-year-old. And I urge the mother and father of that three-year-old to cooperate, to provide substantive information about what transpired at that gas station. That's the only way that we're going to be able to make headway in this case. This news of the shooting at the funeral home and of the three-year-old would be shocking under any circumstances. But what makes this incident especially heinous is that those shooters took advantage of families and friends who were gathered to mourn the death of a young man who himself had lost his life just the week before. The ongoing battle that seemingly spreads from day to day, block to block, as we fight throughout the summer to end this carnage. And as you heard, a separate incident about five miles away, a three-year-old in the back seat of her parents' car got shot after the father had an encounter with someone. By the grace of God, she is still with us, but she's in serious condition. <clears throat> To the families of the victims <clears throat> last night, but also before, They're you are experiencing an even new level of trauma and pain, and I recognize that each one of these new incidents triggers your pain, your grief, and your trauma. For anyone who needs help, I encourage you to call 311. We have resources that are at the ready and available for you. If you just need someone to talk to, if you need support in this difficult time, we have city resources that are available for you. Please don't hesitate to call 311. This is a difficult time to stand here because of the pain that we're all feeling. We all had restless nights last night, me included. But I woke up this morning even more resolved to do everything that we can to stop this violence. You've heard me say this before. Violence is a symptom, 
a symptom of communities that are crying out. Young men who don't believe that they have a future other than being part of one of these gangs or factions or cliques, who believe that their future only lies on a corner and not college or career. We cannot abandon and we will not abandon our support and our continued determination to turn around their future and to end the pipeline that leads to these gangs to claim another young man for them, but not for the young man or their family or their community. And I have to say again to the cowards behind these shootings, and cowards I think is the right word here, we have to ask you to find your humanity. The superintendent is right. The senseless violence, this cycle of retaliation, picking up a gun, many times in petty, petty grievances, picking up a gun that solves nothing but causes so much lifelong pain. I pray for you, but I also pray that we find you and that we bring you to justice. Speaking as a mayor, you encounter some very difficult circumstances, and certainly this is one. But there's nothing that tears at my heart that causes me sleepless nights, but also makes me resolve to bring justice to the victims in our city who deserve better and who need us to step up for them even more. We have all witnessed far too much recently. We need to make these moments of grief and anguish a thing of the past. There have to be safe places, a code of conduct in every neighborhood. But as you all know, this is more than just a challenge for our police department. It's a challenge for us as mothers, as fathers, as family members, as neighbors. We all are called in this season to think about what we can do, not just think, but to act. There are too many of our young men that are growing up without a sense of values, without a sense of humanity and without understanding the preciousness and the sanctity of life. We have to do better as a city, as a community, as a neighborhood. Our mission has to include <clears throat> making sure that we hold those responsible for these crimes and others responsible. We cannot give the killers, the shooters, any shelter. I'm asking <clears throat> anyone with information to please step forward. You can provide information anonymously by calling 311, by submitting a tip to cpdtip.com. That's anonymous and it is safe. Someone listening at this moment knows who is responsible for these and other crimes. Someone listening has valuable information that could lead to their apprehension and to bring a measure of justice to the victims. Someone listening has information that will help prevent the retaliation that unfortunately is probably being planned at this very moment. Mothers, fathers, girlfriends, block clubs, community members, faith community members, anyone with information, I implore you not to be silent in this moment. I recognize that there is fear, and we understand that. But if we are silent, the violence will continue. If we are silent and we do not step up in this moment to provide information anonymously and confidentially and safely, the retaliation cycle will continue to repeat itself. In this season, we are suffering as a city. 
and in the words of the great poet Robert Frost, the only way out is through. We need to continue to lean into our faith and depend on each other. We need to find our sense of humanity, our sense of community, and make sure that every single day we are doing everything we can to reach out to these young men, to break the cycle of violence, to show them that there is another path forward where their lives can actually have meaning, where they can actually contribute to the betterment of themselves, their families, and their communities. There are people of goodwill all over the city who understand that and carry forth with them in the way that they conduct themselves, but in a way in which they are contributing at the block level, at the neighborhood level, every day to communicate that message. My friends, this is our time to step up. We are the majority. We are the people who will change this narrative. But we need to step up in this moment and encourage others with information not to be silent. I want to thank Superintendent Brown, Chief Dinahan for Stephanie Carter, and the men and women of the police department, Commander Muhammad. And at this time, I would invite my friend, Alderman David Moore, who was on the scene moments before as he was leaving his office, who has been a stalwart advocate for doing more to protect our communities. I invite him to offer a few more words at this time. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you to my commander, Commander Muhammad, and all the CPD staff who works tirelessly and effortlessly trying to keep our community safe. The, the mayor and um, the superintendent um, talked about the things that they need that needs to be done, and I echo um, those things. So I don't have to repeat that. But not only as an elected official, but more importantly as a young man who grew up in Inglewood since the age of 11, who not just living in some big white house on a hill, but live this every day in and out with his constituents. There's a bigger issue. And this doesn't always just start here at City Hall. Everybody want to put everything, whether it's at the mayor's lap or at the alderman's lap. But they're doing everything that they can to make sure that this city keeps rolling and keep people safe as possible. As you all are seeing, New York numbers are going up. Everybody's numbers are going up. Why? Because this is a national issue. This is a national issue. And so what we have to do, for me, four points for me, we have to have government and private sector from the top to the bottom invest a billion dollars in each of these communities that are high unemployment and high um, crime. And, today, and the government can't do it alone. There has to be some private money in here because it's economics that got us here. And so it's going to be economics to get us out of here. The second thing is that we have to have a Family First Commission at the state of Illinois. And we have to focus on wrap around service. I appreciate this mayor so much because of her heart and her compassion. What she say? She said we have to make sure those young men have an um, option other than gangs. We have to put our arms around them. Their ways and their actions are cowardly. But many of them want a way out. You don't know they, their stories. If somebody told you at nine years old I was beat and put out and I'm out here raising another guy like that and this is how we're making it, those stories are real. Those stories are real. Then you begin to look at that person in a different um, window. And so we have to have that wraparound service piece and all that takes money. And not just from us having to raise taxes on people. Private sector and this federal government has to step up. The other thing, we have to strengthen our witness protection program. Have to. I get people coming to me all the time, and I relay that information. But they want to step up more, but they want to know that they are protected. 
They want to know that they are protected. And then the fourth thing, and again, it falls on the federal government. These guns are not just coming from around the corner. They're not just coming from down uh, of the street. This is a national issue. How, are you hearing about on the news we arrested a large cartel that we've, uh, we've captured? Uh, our police are here getting guns off the street at the city level all day. But are you hearing the federal government saying we stop this? No. And until that happens, they're just triaging. They just tri and doing their best. I'm telling you they are. But it's triaging. The federal government has to step up in a real way. Because these guys are not just getting guns and drugs from around the country. Be a, don't be afraid to challenge those other countries where these um, drugs are coming from. But you're not hearing. You heard about El Chapo. Who have you heard since then? Have you heard that the whole kingdom and all this is being brought down? That's the real war. We're triaging. And we're triaging as best as we can. And until those things happen... You are going to see, it starts at the national level, that this stuff is going to continue because it's continuing in New York, not just Chicago. So it's not just a Chicago issue. It's a national issue. And so, so with that said, I just want to make sure I give my condolences um, to these families and then make sure that you trust and know that not m myself as alderman, me working with all of my commanders, my um, three districts, and having a direct pipeline. I appreciate this mayor so much. She's always answering back, what do you need? And I want my residents to continue. Make those calls. Continue to form your block clubs. It makes a difference. I promise you it does. And we're going to continue to make a difference in our communities to make um, your lives safer and um, um, more healthier than you need it to be from a holistic standpoint. Thank you so much, Mayor. We'll take on-topic questions only now. So, Mayor, this is for anyone who wants to answer, or it could be for the superintendent. Can you just tell us who you are? Oh, sorry. I'm Jessica D'Onofrio, reporter with uh, ABC7. Okay. Um, good morning to you. Good morning. So a lot of these questions that I'm getting from all of the media outlets are variations of the same question. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of it has to do with the warning that was given prior to the funeral. Um, what information did police have about the funeral? Who was it for? Uh, what relation it might have had to gang conflict? What we're hearing um, from some activists is that uh, police were warned in advance that there could be a shooting there. Uh, the response was one squad, um, but that there maybe should have been a more robust police presence at this funeral. Can I correct that narrative just a little bit? We had two police squad cars there, and we had a full tech team in the area. And we treat all of our funerals that have any uh, gang robbery or gang connection in similar ways. And, and I just want to emphasize this. There are over 117,000 gang members, 55 major gangs, along with the 2,500 subset factions, who are all both internally in conflict with each other, and in conflict with the other rival gangs. And so every gang funeral with any evidence of any time kind of gang affiliation is treated similarly. Uh, squad car presence, there were two, not one, and there was a full tactical team in the area. Uh, and that's how we treat everyone. So regardless of the warnings given, if we didn't even get a warning, we treat every funeral or wake or repast the same ways. So it's not an accurate account of what happened. Superintendent Brown, what were the nature of those warnings? Who who reached out? What were those what what were those warnings? We had intelligence that the deceased was killed in a drive by shooting. Uh and therefore uh we uh uh, investigated further and there was a gang connection and we deploy our resources accordingly as we would any other funeral or wake in the same fashion. Can you talk a little bit about the young man uh, who was uh, being mourned at the funeral, um, what this was in connection to, what this was possible retaliation for, to give us some context to it? Well, let me just say this without going into detail. I'm going to have to turn over the, the details 
if we are able to talk to chief of detectives. A drive-by shooting in Chicago more than likely always leads to some kind of retaliation. I think I mentioned that several times in my top comments. It, it's, it's about revenge, the cycle of revenge, the cycle of retaliation that fuels our shootings and murders. And, and so that's kind of the top line. If you want to dig down further, I, I don't know how helpful that would be. A person was killed in a drive-by shooting. That's enough for us to treat it differently and to investigate further. And as soon as we know anything related to uh, gang conflicts, we deploy cars at the uh, funeral site and uh, in the area, full tact teams in the area. So none of the narrative that the first line of questioning uh, came through is accurate. And I'll turn it over to Dean Hennessy see if you want to provide any further details on the victim, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I mean, okay. we, we do we'll have a name. All, all the stations pretty much sure. know the name sure. of the person and want to know a little bit more. Sure. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that case, but yes, that, that individual was killed in the Inglewood area, and it was a, due to uh, you know, a gang conflict. And we believe when we're investigating that murder that that one occurred related to a prior shooting or murder incident. So it's a, it's an, as the superintendent mentioned, kind of staying at that, that higher level, this is an ongoing gang conflict where individuals are shooting at each other. And obviously those individuals then have no interest in cooperating with police. And going back to kind of what what the alderman said, so then we're we're asking the community, can we can we kind of get that information to help the detectives because the individuals involved in this tit for tat are, are not you know have no interest in, in cooperating. They just want to go to the, the next shooting incident, and, and and as the alderman mentioned, it's difficult for you know uh, the mothers and who, who live on the block who know these individuals to say that I'm going to step up and, and actually say, like, you know, whatever, little Johnny Johnson, the kid I saw grow up, maybe as the individual did it, without ensuring that they're, they're not going to be harmed. But to, to answer your question, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing, ongoing gang conflict problem, which the superintendent kind of mentioned um, in general w with the gangs. I'm not going to go too much deeper into the this, this specific murder, but, yes, that was it. Just to help us pinpoint, um, this took place in the Englewood neighborhood, and do you know the cross streets and the day? Uh, I don't have my notes in front of me. I think it was July 14th. I, well, well, I'll get you the exact information when this is over. Um, I believe it was near the 74th and Stewart area. We're wondering if we covered it, so we're trying to find. Understood. We'll, we'll get you that information. Thank you. Superintendent, um, the I-team, the Channel 7 I-team, began reporting two years ago about police trying to prevent ongoing funeral threats. Uh, does there need to be more robust police presence at the funerals of gang-connected people going forward? Uh, what, what can you do? So one of the things, that, that's, a, that's really in the weeds and, and likely the wrong direction, just to focus on funerals. There's several hundred gang conflicts every day in Chicago, several hundred. And as I mentioned in my comments, and, and I think it's worthwhile repeating, we, our strategy is to grow our deployment the number of officers in a centralized way so that we will have uh, resources pre-deployed and not just to recover guns and make gun arrests, but also to get, I think it's important not to mention the second part of our strategy, to engage the community in these areas, particularly our young people, our young men, uh, and their families, so that we can offer them uh, different options, as the mayor mentioned, rather than uh, arrest being our only uh, activity. We want our activity also to have a, a, a positive uh, interaction with these young people so that they will listen to our mentoring to get them on the right direction. But again, this is about gang, guns, and drugs. No, no doubt. I mean, I try to say it as many ways as I can. This is about gangs, guns, and drugs. Many of the retaliations, the murders, the initial murder, it likely is about some beef between a gang and another gang, external or internal, and or having to do with the drug market. Some, some drug trade transaction gone bad, which then leads also to retaliation once that uh, violence is meted out. Are your officers okay, the ones who were on the scene last night? That's one of the biggest concerns I have. You know, we're not bulletproof. Let me say that again. We're not bulletproof. And we are, through our deployment strategy, putting them in more of harm's way. And we're asking them to, they've already collected 5,000 guns so far this year off the street. Every gun recovered 
or gun arrest is a deadly encounter that we survived. Whether shots were fired or not, it's a deadly encounter to take a gun off a, off a gangster. Last two questions. Um, and Superintendent, I, I'm wondering, were any of them physically injured? No, they were not. Okay, Thank and you. last question. Uh, this might be for, for you, Mr. Sure. Dina. Um, can you just talk about the suspects in this case? Can you talk about, uh, we, we know that there's somebody in for questioning. How many more could you be looking for in terms of video surveillance you might already have? Sure, so uh, we'll start with the video surveillance. So we do have video surveillance of the incident. It's not um, graphic enough to give personal identifiers uh, at this time where we could just, um, you know, uh, give, you, give you the information like we did in the one case where hopefully somebody w would call. So we don't have that yet. So we are going to continue to work. Uh, obviously, this is very preliminary. So this is, you know, less than uh, 12 to 15 hours that this occurred. So we're going to continue to work on the case to try to get more information, collect more, more video. As far as the suspects are concerned, it was, you know, we believe that there were three suspects in this vehicle, and we believe that two of them were shooters and that they fled the scene. So now we have to start digging to get more information. Um, but as uh, everybody up here had kind of already talked about, we are just, we're asking for anybody with information, you know, to provide it to us. Um, you know, obviously these guys were, th this happened, you know, there's hundreds of people, not, not hundreds of people, excuse me, there's several people out there when this occurred. We believe that the suspects in this case Obviously, people uh, know that they were going to do this. We don't think this was just random. So we're looking for anybody with information uh, to bring it forward to us. Do you have video Thank of you. the three-year-old? Any video at that scene? Um, no video that I am aware of at this time. Thank you, everyone. Morning. Give me a thumbs up when you for the 15 people injured last night in the 1000 block of West 79th Street and five miles east of 2400 in the 2400 block of East. Detectives Brendan Dinahan uh, for more details on both of these shootings and then I'll come back with. Brendan. Hanging outside of that location. <clears throat> when a vehicle, a Malibu, came pulling around the block, and then you can see which point when the father's driving away, shots are fired into the vehicle, striking the child. At this point, uh, they start with reporting on violence in a neighborhood. Because Superintendent Brown and Chief Dinahan have laid out the basic facts. I want to extend my thanks to our man. And then you can switch these shootings, and then I'll uh, block seventy nine. Give me. Good morning. Give me a thumbs up when you for the fifteen people injured last night in the one thousand block of West Seventy Ninth Street and miles east of 2400 
in the 2400 block of East Detective Brendan Dinahan uh, for more details on both of these shootings, and then I'll come back with Brendan. Hanging outside of that location, <clears throat> when a vehicle, a Malibu, came pulling around the block, and then you can see which point when the father's driving away, shots are fired into the vehicle, striking the child. At this point, uh, the we start with reporting on violence in a neighborhood. Because Superintendent Brown and Chief Dinahan have laid out the basic facts. I want to extend my thanks to our men. Intended violence. Point uh, that these shots are coming, and then details on both of uh, four, uh, 79th Street. Give me a thumbs up when you for the 15 people injured last night in the 1000 block of West 79th Street and five miles east of 2400 in the 2400 block of East Detective Brendan Dinahan uh, for more details on both of these shootings and then I'll come back with Brendan. Hanging outside of that location. <clears throat> when a vehicle, a Malibu, came pulling around the block, and then you can see which point when the father's driving away, shots are fired into the vehicle, striking the child. At this point, uh, the we start with reporting on violence in a neighborhood. Because Superintendent Brown and Chief Dinahan have laid out the basic facts. I want to extend my thanks to our